All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to solve radical equations, okay? That's equations that contain roots, uh, square root, cube root, other roots, it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to use the same kind of process here to solve these, okay? We're going to use basic algebra, all right? And we want to isolate the radical expression on one side by itself first, okay? Now, we need to be aware um, when you're solving radical equations, they're may be a solutions that you find throughout the, the process of solving that don't actually work in the original equation, okay? We call those extraneous, okay? So extraneous solutions, solutions that occur when solving certain types of equations that are not actually solutions of the original equation, okay? These can occur in a few instances. Radical equations where the nth roots are even, so you might have extraneous solutions when you solve this kind of radical equation. Here, that's not going to be the case. The root is the uh, cube root here. Uh, three is an odd number, not an even number, so you're not going to get extraneous solutions here. If this were a four, okay, if that were a four, a six, an eight, so on, the potential for extraneous solutions uh, would be there, okay? So uh, extraneous solutions can occur in radical equations where the nth roots are even. They can occur uh, when we have variables in the denominator of a rational expression. So we always need to be aware of that. Um, and then maybe some uh, logarithmic equations when the variable uh, exists as the argument of a logarithm. Okay? Anytime you get a solution when you're solving equations, you should always check to make sure it works. Okay? But you really have to here because the solutions you find might not actually be true. Um, and you need to be aware of that, and you need to verify the solutions you get are actually solutions of the original equation, okay? So, we've got a few examples here we're going to do. Uh, let's we'll start with a real basic one here in example 2a, okay? So, the radical expression is already isolated. So, in order to remove the radical, we're just going to square both sides, okay? So, whatever I do to one side, i got to do to the other. So, when I square radical t minus 3, the radical just goes away, okay? I'm left with t minus 3 on the left side, and I get 49 on the right side, okay? I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and I get my solution for that radical equation, 52. Always plug it in. 52 minus 3 is 49. Square root of 49 is 7. So we're anticipating this being the positive square root of uh, t minus 3, or the positive square root of 49, okay? All right, B. The radical expression is not isolated yet. I need to move the 2 over here to the right side first. So the 2 moves to the right side, it becomes positive. Now, I've got the cube root of 2x minus 4. So in order to eliminate the radical there, I'm going to have to cube both sides, or raise each side to the third power. Okay? So that uh, eliminates the radical here. My left side now is 2x minus 4, and my right side is 8. 2 to the third power is 8. Add 4 to both sides, divide by 2, and x equals 6, okay? Plug it back in, check, make sure it works. 2 times 6 is 12, 12 minus 4 is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0, okay? So this is a solution. Notice there were no extraneous solutions in either of the first two examples, okay? All right, now C and D get a little bit tougher, all right? And C, the radical's already isolated, I'm going to square both sides, okay? When I square the left side, again, my radical uh, symbol just goes away. It's x squared minus x minus 4. I'm left with uh, what's called the radicand, what was underneath the radical. On the right side, I'm squaring a binomial. So remember that pattern from earlier in the class. Uh, square the first, x squared. Multiply the two terms together, 2x, and then double it. That's where the 4x comes from. And then square the last. 2 times 2 is 4, all right? Now, if you'll notice, these x squares, they're on different sides of the equation. They're same, so they're going to cancel out, okay? So I'm going to move the 4x over here to the left side. So I've got a negative x minus 4x gives me negative 5x. I'm going to move this minus 4 over to the right side. It becomes positive, so 4 plus that 4 is 8. Divide by negative 5, and my answer is negative 8 fifths, okay? This works. You can, uh, I want you guys to check and make sure it works. I'm not going to go through that here because I want to keep the video relatively short. But if you plug in negative 8 fifths here, here, and here, uh, what you're going to get on each side is 2 fifths. So you'd get 2 fifths equals 2 fifths. So this is a solution. It is not extraneous. Okay? All right, D. 
Let's isolate the square root of 2 minus x. All right. I'm going to square both sides. All right. So uh, 2x minus 1 squared is going to give me 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Again, we're squaring a binomial. You've got to know how to do that uh, when you're solving uh, radical equations. Okay. On the right side, I get 2 minus x. Notice if you square a negative, you get a positive. And then we're left with the radicand here, 2 minus x. All right. Now, earlier in this section, we started solving quadratic equations. Okay. So we're going to have a quadratic equation here. Let's get everything on one side, set it equal to 0. Okay. 4x squared minus 3x minus 1. Okay, you can factor this. If you didn't recognize you could factor it, you can use quadratic equation. It's up to you, okay? But you really need to use one of those methods. Uh, I'm going to factor because that's the easier way to go about this. So when I factor it, I get 4x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, so let's use the zero product property. I'm going to take each of these factors, set it equal to zero. So first factor, 4x plus 1, set it equal to zero. Second factor, x minus 1, set it equal to zero. And now we're going to solve these two little simple uh, equations. So uh, the first one, I get x equals negative 1 fourth. Second one, I get x equals 1. Okay. Now, when I plug in negative 1 fourth up here, I'm going to get uh, negative 1 half on both sides. Okay. So this one, this solution is going to work. When I plug in 1, though, okay, notice... On the right side, on the left side, let's do the left side first. 2 times 1 is 2, so the left side is equal to 2. The right-hand side here, when I plug in 1 here, I get 2 minus 1, which is 1. The square root of 1 is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So on the left side, I got 2. On the right side, I got 0. So that means that uh, solution we found, x equals 1, is extraneous. It comes about through the solution process, but it doesn't actually solve the original equation, okay? It solves this equation that we created eventually when we squared both sides, okay? So you need to be aware when you're solving radical equations, specifically when there are even roots here with the radical, that extraneous solutions can occur. So it's doubly important to check your work. You should always check your work, uh, but here you have to to make sure that the solutions that you found are actually solutions of the original equation, okay? So that's how you solve radical equations.